I want to introduce Clara Peters, an important artist of her generation, originating in Antwerp. This may actually be Clara Peters herself, uh, serving as the model for an allegory of vanity. She's dressed in very old-fashioned costume for the time, and she has a table full of rich things, jewels and coins, and two specimens of goldsmith's work, uh, one tipped over, and beyond it a covered cup of great splendor. She looks off stage and she holds a pocket watch. Time is passing. Life may be good now, the message is, but it will go the way of the flowers in the vase. Uh, it may be gone as quickly uh, as the bet that somebody placed on the roll of those dice. And life is like a soap bubble. There's one floating next to her head. It will pop. The most moving allegory of vanity at this period is actually an imaginary scene of repentance. The picture by the great French artist Georges de la Tour of Mary Magdalene, the reformed sinner who's shed her fancy clothes and sits with a skull in her lap and books on the table contemplating the flame. It's clear that she has learned her lesson. Clara Peters again with more ingredients uh, for still lives during the century ahead. Food, uh, that is butter here on top of cheese, wine, bread, pretzels, nuts, all pushed close together, a bit dry highly painted in subtle raking light. And there could be a cautionary note sounded by this particular setup that people would have picked up at the time, by the way. There's a Dutch proverb that says, dairy on top of dairy is the work of the devil. Peter Klaas, the ingredients for breakfast or lunch, not especially appetizing to us as breakfast maybe, a herring, a wine, beer, and a pipe with tobacco. But again, we can't be too literal. This is not a place setting or a buffet table. There is a thematic relationship however, between these objects really have to be seen up close to be believed. Everything will be consumed here, including the matches here, the tobacco in the tin, and the coals here in the brazier, gorgeously painted, the coals in the brazier used to light the matches. The cards are tradition in Dutch art, symbol of a waste of time, and an invitation to reversal of fortune, like the dice in the picture you just saw by Clara Peters, especially since the ace of spades is showing here. Smoking, though, was a relative novelty. Uh, tobacco was an import from the New World that was getting popular, but it was still associated with the lower orders, um, peasants and sailors and soldiers. Smoking was an easy target for Calvinist preachers. This is by Peter Klaas's counterpart in Harlem, Willem Klaas Heda, in a somewhat cooler tonality with finer, more sharply focused technique. The light falls more emphatically here on the table and the wall behind as well making a distinct space around it. On the white tablecloth is not just bread and oysters, but a collection of glass and metalwork that's far grander than anything we've seen so far. At the right, you get a kind of summit meeting of huge pewter flagon, a tall gilt cup, silver tatsa tipped over, uh, silver standing salt here. There's a great big two-handled groomer, you could say, and an exquisite Venetian pitcher. Things are just a bit disordered. Some oysters and bread have already been eaten, and a glass at the far right as capsized. We see right away what these two fallen things do. They're the two sides of an implied triangle that stabilizes the right half of the picture, plays off against the unstable, disordered white cloth. And again, the plates are pushed out a bit precariously into our space. The customary game of balance is going on on the right. The crowding of those large vessels into a much heavier visual mass than anything else, but on the left, offsetting the mass, is the greater breadth of the table that exerts a kind of cantilevering force to produce equilibrium.